Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss a voltage follower inverting and non-inverting experiment. Aim to study the working of a operational amplifier as a voltage follower and also as an inverting and non-inverting amplifier. One should know the block diagram, operational amplifier and theory as a voltage follower inverting and non-inverting amplifier they should know so that we can discuss how to conduct the experiment. op -amp can be used as an inverting or non-inverting amplifier. We can use as a voltage follower also with a unity gain. In voltage follower, input what you are giving, the same output you are going to get or output follows the input. Most of the time, the question will come into our mind. When output equal to input, can we use a single stand wire? What is the use of operational amplifier then? And according to many students, they think it is the simplest experiment. But lot of things are there to learn. This is a circuit diagram. Input voltage we are giving. The output voltage also we are getting the same. Output follows the input. It is a very high input impedance and low output impedance. The voltage follower is having a very high input impedance and low output impedance. And it is used as a buffer amplifier to eliminate the loading effect. What is the loading effect? You can refer my video. It is available in the YouTube my channel only. Once if you understand the loading effect, it will be very easy to understand a voltage follower. Procedure is very simple. Connect the circuit diagram. Apply tools peak to peak, sine wave of 1 kilohertz, observe the output at pin number 6 on the CRO. Find the voltage gain. Voltage gain is given by output voltage divided by input voltage. Vary the frequency from 100 hertz towards the maximum, whatever is available. And observe the output voltage. And note down this tabular column is given. Say frequency, output voltage, gain and gain in dB. Find the gain and gain in dB for different frequencies. Observe the phase difference also. At 100 Hz, is there any phase difference? At 1 kHz, 10 kHz, also the phase difference also. Plot the input and output waveforms on the graph sheet. Plot the graph of a gain in dB versus frequency and find the bandwidth. So once if you complete this table column, you can read the, you can plot the graph. This much most of the students they do it. One should understand more than this. To know more, these things you have to do. Where is the supply voltage? You vary only plus VC. You are getting output. Change this. Reduce, increase, find the output. Is there any change or not? Only change the minus VE, observe the output, vary the both and observe and vary the input voltage from 1 volt, 2 volt, 10 volt, 20 volt, something like that. Note down the changes and usually don't exceed more than supply voltage. Vary the offset, for example positive, negative offset you give along with the input voltage, observe the changes in the output and try to understand why it happens like that. Finally, you can find out the output resistance also. Voltage follower, the name of voltage follower, are, other names are isolation amplifier, buffer amplifier, unity gain amplifier and uh, advantages are output op amp takes zero current from the input and loading effects can be avoided. These are the some advantages and applications, voltage followers are generally used to isolate the stages from each other and also called as voltage buffer and high impedance and very low output impedance is very advantageous and it has a lot of applications and it is used in sample and hole circuits, active filters, bridge circuits via transducer. It's very easy to understand what is the use of voltage follower. For example, here if I connect a 10 or 100 ohm load, if you measure the voltage at this point, this 10k, this 100 ohm will come in parallel. The total resistance will reduce, hence the current will reduce.
But if you use an op amp, even though it's a 100 ohm, the current flow will not change even though you make it as a 1k, 10k, 100k, 10 ohm also. This current will remain same or voltage at this point will remain same. Hence, we can say the loading effect will not be there. And op amp has an inverting amplifier. So, input I have given, output amplification is there, but inversion phase shift is there. And this is a AF equal to minus RF by R1 is the equation. And for a given equation, for a given gain, you have to find out a value of RF. R1 you can assume 1K, calculate the RF. And non inverting here also amplified, but phase difference is not the. And design is AF equal to gain equation is given by 1 plus RF by R1. And for a given AF, choose a particular RF. Procedure connect the circuit as shown in figure. Apply the input signal same way how you have done for the voltage follower. You have to repeat the same procedure. Your tabular column is also same. You have to repeat the same steps. These are the frequencies you can vary 100 Hz up to the maximum. And plot the graph. To know more, vary or say increase or decrease the supply voltage. You have done the changes in the output waveform. What you have done for voltage follower, the same steps you can repeat for inverting as well as non inverting amplifier. Vary the input voltage 0 to more voltage. When gain is high, automatically you will find a clipping. And also, you can vary the asset voltage also. Sometimes you give the only positive, sometimes you give a negative. You will find a clipped waveform. Try to understand why it happens. And check the input resistance, output resistance and compare with the theoretical input and output resistance and these things you have to do along with the just observing the waveform note input and output waveforms of the voltage follower inverting or inverting amplifier should be drawn in the linear graph sheets and the frequency response should be done in the semi log graph and fill this table after the experiment when you are conducting so input resistance the way how you have done for voltage follower you have to do it for inverting as well as for non-inverting input resistance and output resistance how to find input resistance with feedback i n given by and rif is given by just ohm's law using those two simply i continue the derivation which is very easy you can just glance it pause here and just try to understand very simple all the steps are given and this I am filling again I do the same procedure for output resistance also just pause and say it the steps are given KCL I am applying incoming current equal to outgoing current Pause here and uh, try to understand. A separate video may be available in the YouTube for the explanation. So you should know output resistance reduces due to feedback, input resistance increases. Similarly, we can do the derivation for inverting amplifier as well. Summary, we have discussed these three circuit, how to note down, what to observe during the conduct conduction of the experiment. Thank you. These are the reference. And for more information, you can visit. If you like this video, please share with your friends. Thank you.